So, um, I remembered a couple of different features of the software that I didn't touch on um, in the first video, so I just wanted to go over a couple of those. And all these are mentioned inside of some of the videos. The guy that actually made this software, uh, he talked about a lot of them, but I just thought I'd go over them for anybody that's coming from one of my videos to uh, try to figure out some more about this. So, first off, um, old mech up the software, and of course, lecture COM port. Uh, also, another way to figure out the COM port thing is right click on the start button, go to device manager, and then go down to ports. And it should say USB serial CH340 or somewhere, uh, something similar to that. So, there you go. All right, so first off, I wanted to show you importing images. So we're going to just go and find a some sort of image. Here is Pokeball. So I'm just going to save this as YouTube. And then we're going to remember this, save to the downloads, go over to the matrix software, push browse, go to downloads. And if you don't have these uh, pre-saved, you can just go to close those. You have to start automatically at OneDrive desktop, for me at least. So I have to go up to Boaz or your username, go to downloads, and then just scroll down to the bottom. And then it should say YouTube for if you saved as that same name. So that's a little bit messed, um, messed up. And like, uh, this won't always work with all images. Obviously, if you get a more like high quality picture, it's going to be hard to convert it down. So that's why I just search for 8x8. But here's a Pikachu, so we're going to try that. Just saved. There we go. So you see it's gone from this to this, which is just about perfect. It's just about finding uh, images that line up pretty well. I guess this was uh, not properly aligned. But this Pikachu works great. There's a bunch of different uh, images that I'm sure would work pretty well. I'm sure this one will work pretty well. Uh, there's an entire pixelart.com. They have some stuff. So you can just tap on these and then download them over here and then try them out. A lot of those should work pretty well. Um, but then just again to demonstrate, we're going to push the export fast LED code, save it to the folder they want, rename it. So I'm going to go Kirby again. Here's where the code is saved. We're going to go to that file, kirbyagain.txt, copy all of this, and actually have some new code for this, which should make it significantly easier. I'll show you that in a second, but make sure you select all of this and then just paste it in. Now this is longer than I thought. One second. So we gotta select the set that we don't need. Delete all that. There we go. Anyway, so here's the new code. This is a massive formula that I didn't make. I was having some difficulty trying to figure out how to um, switch it whenever there's like numbers that aren't just an ordered list. So say like 20 through 25 is an ordered list. So, but what if 25 went from 24 to 90? Well, now it can because of this code. But before, if you went to uh, 90, it would just completely break the code and display an error. This code also transfers words. So right here it says fast LED on the left. Now it gets transferred to the right because of uh, the if count if statement right here. 
And again, I didn't develop this. I had to ask some help on Excel, um, R slash Excel, and Mr. MH Mike was very helpful in uh, figuring out the best formula for this. But anyway, uh, so after you do that, you can copy the B column just from B2 down to the end of your uh, text, which for me is B66. So just copy that. Go to your Arduino file and then just paste this in all the way down to the bottom right here. So push paste. And then we can push upload after making sure that our board and processor is selected properly. So here's an issue. Um, it says I cannot open device comp3 because access is denied. That is because the LED matrix control software is also connected to the device. It only allows one connection at a time. So just make sure to close out of that and then push upload and it should work. Yeah, that looks like it's the only to be working. Done uploading. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you this. Okay, it's uh, very much not in focus. Try putting a piece of paper over it maybe something okay uh, this is a really bad webcam so I'm just gonna do what I did last time and attach a picture of what happened inside of the YouTube description as well as inside of the github link also inside of the YouTube description but that is in fact a picture of Kirby make sure that you have your LED pin selected properly as well as your brightness um yeah so I also wanted to show you guys how to do GIFs. So we're going to just select a GIF here. And uh, this process isn't perfect. This is kind of old code, like the uh, software. So it's not perfect. And the guy is working on developing a newer version, but it hasn't come out yet. And I'm gonna make an update video when it does. But basically, um, yeah, it's imperfect, but it does work, which is pretty cool. So I'm actually not going to use that fire animation that I just found. I'm going to try to import a GIF from downloads. Um, GIF I want to use is, where is it? Skeleton.gif. All right. So we're going to open that up real quick takes a second and then push play. So this is the animation that we should be seeing on our little LED matrix in a second, if everything works properly. So I'm gonna slow that down a little bit to uh, 14 frames per second. And then we're going to push export fast LED code. So we're gonna twitch this folder and then skeleton example. Code tickets actually uh, 14 frames. And then we're going to go to our fast OED file where we're saving our documents. Go to skeleton example. Again, just control A, control C, copy all of this. And then we're going to close out of this in order to actually write our code. But first we have to go to the spreadsheet, which is also going to be linked in the description. So then just clear out all this and base it in. So as you can see, this is significantly longer than uh, it normally is. But that's fine. Uh, if you need to drag this farther down, it's perfectly fine. You just drag it. And uh, in the spreadsheet that I post in the YouTube description, this will be dragged all the way to the bottom or pretty far down. So you can do any sort of GIFs animations that you need. But yeah, so all this is uh, translated as well as the text. And then just make sure to select all of your code from the start. Copy that, go to your Arduino code, paste it just straight in, boom. All right, so there we go. This is all the code. At the beginning, it just starts the black screen, so that's what all the CRGB zeros are. Then we're gonna push upload again, check and make sure the correct board and correct processor, as well as the correct port. It's uploading, and then I will attach a video inside the description to show that the uh, skull is working 
or we can try the camera again, but I'm not too confident in it. Uh, you can kind of see that there. Garbage quality camera, I need to get a new one. But I'll attach a video or a picture of the SCO animation inside of the description. So that's about all of the major features. Let me close out some of these tabs and then, ah uh, yeah. One more thing that's kind of interesting. So whenever you download the LED matrix uh, control software, which is just down here for me, you also get a LED matrix serial file, which if you upload this to the Arduino, allows you to directly display and draw onto this, uh, which is pretty cool. So you gotta tell you that the number of LEDs inside your matrix, which is the horizontal times vertical, as well as the data pin. Then just push upload. And then you can directly control your Arduino from your computer live and do all kinds of cool effects. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, part of that is because I haven't figured out how to do that serpentine translation thing that I was talking about earlier in the first video yet, but if I figure that out, I'll probably make an update video to describe how to do that. So everything is kind of like a little bit not perfect um, whenever you're trying to draw or something, but here we go. I'm going to try to get this focused enough that you can kind of see what's happening. All right, I don't think it's gonna get much better than this. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. But uh, anyway, so you select your COM port again, and then you can just go to say, let's drop the brightness a little bit. That might help a little bit for the camera. You go to draw, select red. Now, as you can see, uh, let me pull up the camera. As you can see, whenever I'm drawing here, it's actually lighting up uh, as soon as I tap it, which is pretty cool. You can do all kinds of effects with that. So, I'm going to switch to blue here. You can see there's just a blue line being drawn. So you can do all kinds of stuff just live on it. Uh, as I was saying, the mapping isn't perfect. So if you watch right here, okay, that's way too bright. If you uh, watch right here, so we're drawing the line, right? If we go over, isn't like perfect it zigzags as you can see through right there because the serpentine matrix is making uh, this pattern that I'm drawing right now with the mouse so you have to correct that inside of the software which I haven't done yet another thing you can do is webcam mode so there you go right now it's just pointing at this and it's not doing anything well doesn't appear to be working maybe because I'm already using it for the video. But you can also do desktop mode which is going to, you have to select your display, push start capture and then as you can see stuff moving on the screen. Uh, well. So as you can see it changes what's being output on the matrix as you move stuff around. It's not a very good effect because it's just a, you know, very uh, low eight by eight displays. Like you're not gonna be wanting to play games or anything on this, but it's still cool. And once I figure out the software and give you guys an update video, then you can actually start trying to do like displaying 8x8 art and stuff on the display. 
So I think that's everything that I wanted to cover. Everything will be either in the description or on the GitHub. The GitHub will also be linked in the description. If you guys have any questions on this process or any other stuff, uh, I'd be happy to help you out with it. This took me forever to figure out the first time, so I'm just kind of trying to make all this both as a way to kind of spread information about it and also just as a reminder to myself in case I need it in the future. Um, one more thing. In the last video I said any size matrix. That is not actually correct with this software. So I'm trying to make a correction there. Um, you can do 2x2 two two all the way up to 16x16. Um, 16 16, but that's the max. Also, you can't do like weird shaped ones. Like you can't do like four by eight currently with the software. So just wanted to correct that. Make sure that nobody's gonna go out and buy a four by eight matrix and then get mad at me because I said it worked with anything. Uh, but yeah, other than that, works great. Um, yep, that should be everything. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know. And I may make an update if I figure out how to do the serpentine pattern for the actual desktop capture thing. All right, bye.